Hi, I'm Michelle Patterson, and July's What's Neat All About Soldering starts right now. What's Neat Show is sponsored by Caboose, sharing our passion for trains since 1938. Hi, my name is Ken Patterson, and in this new video, we're going to take all the mysteries out of soldering. This is going to be an advanced and beginner's video on soldering. We're going to discuss soldering your track work and everything that goes into that. We're going to talk about soldering all the wiring on your layout and the block wires and how to go about soldering the electrical for a model railroad layout. We're going to talk about all the various types of soldering equipment. Pencil points are the primary tool that we're going to use for the track work and the wiring. And then we're going to get into resistance soldering rig. A great mystery for many people, but if you learn this trait, you can actually make some darn good money selling models and building fabricating stuff from scratch out of brass. I'm going to show you how I took this beautiful $5,000 one half inch scale precision scale locomotive that was destroyed in shipping and absolutely rebuild the model into pristine factory new condition then i also take you through and i show you how i built a light tower actually in this video we're going to take a light tower that i've already built and repair it and i'm going to show you how to go through the process of working on a tugboat building the superstructure handrail steps and the top uh, lighting and antennas and all that fabrication work all made out of brass. There's literally nothing that you can't do with brass and in this video we're going to cover all the bases and take all the mystery out of soldering. Each type of equipment that I'm going to discuss has got its own separate pur purposes although a lot of them can overlap. Starting with your old grandpa's handgun, if you can remember the old Weller handguns, the 125 watt units, most people have melted a lot of railroad ties using these things, but they work really good for soldering your track together. You can find one of these on eBay for about 10 bucks. Normally what we like to use is pencil tip soldering irons, and there's various types of them. They come with bases and fancy knobs, but I like the simple ones. The larger ones are really good for O scale, and almost large scale track. The smaller ones are excellent for doing HO scale track and our HO scale wiring. This is what you really need to get started with and these will last you a great many years. They simply don't wear out. You can find them for as low as five or ten dollars and I've also discovered units that have got adaptable blades on them so you can use them for cutting into plastic, making shingles on the side of a building, anything like that. A lot of stone work you can do in Walther's plastic buildings when you're, when you're super detailing them with a knife cutter like that. As we move up the scale now, we're getting into the more useful units where they've got temperature degrees on them. They'll show either in Celsius or Fahrenheit how what the temperature of the needle is. So in Fahrenheit, about 800 degrees. Uh, in Celsius, around 480 degrees. And these work great because you can adapt a lot of different types of tips on them. I've got a knife tip on it. I've got pencil tips, very heavy tips, a lot of different tips. Usually they come with about 10. You can buy a unit like this on eBay for about 50 bucks. Now, resistance soldering rig, that's what this is. When you use one of these units, you'll see when I step on the foot pedal switch, I get instant heat in the tip of the nozzle. And as you see, the nozzle heats up the brass. Everything instantly melts together. If you use liquid soldering, like I'm doing here in this video, I'm putting liquid solder onto the piece of metal. I'm hitting the foot switch, and you get instant heat, instant bond. It's almost like using hot melt glue. And, and this unit is absolutely usable for building brass models. If you're building brass, you want that area to get very hot quick so the surrounding brass doesn't cool off 
and also melt and your whole structure starts coming apart. I also use the resistance soldering rig for doing garden railroad track. When I've got a solder wire on a code 250 rail, that's pretty heavy. And any of these other units would get the rail too hot and melt the ties. With the instant heat that you get from a resistance soldering rig, it makes jobs that you couldn't ordinarily do doable. Now, as we get up higher into the scale, Radio Shack sells a pretty nice soldering rig, two-piece unit, simple pencil tip. I haven't found a lot of different types that I can put onto this one. I, I inquired about that and couldn't find any. It's got a very fine tip on it for doing electronics work. So if you're fixing cell phones and things like that, it has nothing to do with the hobby. You got a side income. These are great for that. This is really almost too small for working on track. It doesn't heat it up quick enough, but it's a great unit. It's got temperature displays on it, preset temperature displays, and a knob. So you don't have to push buttons and wait for things to get hot. The last unit that I want to talk about is, is the Kreml of the Krem. This is a unit that's got the variable speed, temperature readouts for the fine point soldering tip. It comes with about 12 different size tips, so the versatility is there for all uses in the hobby. Another interesting thing it's got is a 12 volt power supply in the front. So if you're at the workbench and you want to test something, test a joint, test the, the lines on one of your resistors, you can do that with the 12 volt power supply. Another feature that this has got, and this has become really big in the last 15 years, is using air to solder with. As you see in this clip, I'm using the pencil tip point air to loosen up the solder on the circuit board. And by doing it that way, you're soldering with air, you're not touching a very hot point onto the electronics, and you also get an even flow over a large area so that you can take a lot of liquid solder and heat it up in a quick hurry using this unit. So something new, if you're into electronics, soldering with air works really well. I have also discovered that when I'm out on a photo shoot and I'm drying the bottom of the feet of people after I put that glue on them, that tacky glue to make them stand up, it takes a long time for that to dry, but with this gun I can quickly speed it up. So I found a lot of other modeling uses out of this heat gun. So that's just kind of an overview of some of the soldering equipment that's out there. Um, and that's all I wanted to discuss at this point on this tape. One of the most important soldering rigs that you want to invest in is this simple pencil tip rig. Spend the $50, go to eBay, find one of these units. This is going to be the most useful pencil tip unit that you're going to find for model railroading. You're going to solder your wiring together with it. In this case, I'm attaching jumper wires to my turnouts after I've gapped them so that I get power throughout. And these are going to be DCC friendly turnouts and at the same time the points are hot all the time which is what I really like is hot frogs so that I don't lose any conductivity. But for a unit like this in this example this is this is the best unit. You're going to use it for your soldering of your wiring. You're going to use it for soldering your rail joiners and your track work. This is just a magnificent unit and it works. It gives you a nice temperature readout in Celsius which is really irrelevant once you find the temperature that you like and that you want. That's the setting that you're going to use all the time. But this is the unit that I suggest that you invest in is one of these types of pencil tip units where you've got a body unit and then you've got a holder for the gun. These work out really well. Um, like I said, I use this for 90% of the work, not for fabricating so much as for all of our electronic track work, switching, laying track, soldering jumper wire, soldering um, all of your connections to your circuit boards when you're making your power panels. This is going to be the unit that you're going to find the most useful to use. Now I'm using 6040 rosin solder on this. It's already got the flux in it and rosin solder doesn't hurt the electrical so and in this case I'm not I don't have any wire for the uh, acid core solder to wick up into so if I was using acid core solder I could actually do that on the track joints and it would flow beautifully but this is working really well with this rosin solder and I've already got some paste flux on the track which is why the solder flows if we didn't use resin or any kind of cleaning agent at all in the solder to clean this rail as it's soldering this solder wouldn't even stick it would not stick to the metal so because of the rosins that are in it or if I were using acid core flux on this in this case um, that would cause it to, to flow very nicely so that's what you do again with the pencil tip rig and that's what I'm using here is this 
this nice pencil tip rig right here to solder this track work together and in any scale be it N scale in this case I'm do actually doing N scale rail joiners for HO scale track code 70 that's the best way to do it they they fit perfect so that's how we use the pencil tip for soldering track now notice when I touch the uh, hot probe to the track I don't touch it very long and the solder just flows right into the joint and that's how you want to use these pencil tip soldering rigs this is the best way to do this on track it's just a wonderful way to guarantee continuity and it works now let's talk briefly about block wiring. The first thing I like to do is take a Dremel motor tool and grind off the rail so I've got a good contact area for the, for the solder to stick. And then what I need to do is fish a wire through the foam generally. And I use a brass tube for this. Sometimes I run the wire through the tube. In this case, I just have to poke a hole and stick the orange wire in. I'm using sol solid strand wire on this because it's never gonna bend or move. I don't have to worry about breakage. So what I need to do is solder the uh, end of the wire to the uh, rail. And I like to strip that off with a rail stripper. And then I like to take a pair of uh, tweezers to clamp the rail into place while I'm soldering it with the rosin solder. So that joint's done. And then it comes down to the electrical side where we want to solder the switch. I put rosin on the switch leads and also on the wire and a little bit of solder already on the switch. And I just touch it for just a few minutes, a few seconds because you don't want to melt it. And then we stuff all the wires back in after everything's soldered up. And it's essentially how I do my block wiring. So now in this segment of the video, we're going to discuss resistance soldering rig. I've got a PBL rig here that I've had for about 15 years, and these things work great. If you can find one of these online used, they don't break. They work forever. And the purpose of a device like this is to heat up the location of a brass model or a piece of brass you're working with immediately, so you've got instant heat, so that all the surrounding parts don't come apart and come desoldered when you're working on a project. So if you're adding small details to a locomotive like this, adding a bell or a new uh, blower, you can do that without affecting the rest of the model with the resistance soldering rig. Also this boat is built, the superstructure and all the handrails and the floors are all built out of brass. Same same idea where I'm sitting here and I'm soldering on very small parts just like hot glue without desoldering the rest of the location. So this is how the uh, brass models are made overseas. Same principle. Now let me show you how the device works. I've got this large scale engine here that uh, is actually a museum quality half inch scale model and this thing's got to be rebuilt because it got shipped and got destroyed in shipping and so what I'm going to do is rebuild the cow catcher and all the various parts on it that are broken using exactly the same technique that I'm going to show you on this scrap brass right now and essentially what I do is I've got my resistance soldering rig I've got my tip that will get hot and I've got my ground wire and I've got to connect the ground wire to the piece of work that we're working on in order to have the circuit of electricity run through the brass for the soldering effect to work. So I'm going to clip my, my alligator clip right here to this piece of brass. And all I want to do is for demonstration, illustration purposes, is I'm going to take this circular piece of stock and just attach it to this flat stock, just like that. So I've got everything set up. The only thing I need to do is get in there with a little bit of solder. I'm going to step on this foot switch to activate it. And today I'm going to use a little bit of liquid solder from the hardware store. Just regular old liquid solder. So I've goobed on some, some liquid solder right here just for illustration purposes on how this works. I'm going to press down on my foot switch with my foot. So I've got instant heat on the location that I want to solder. Let me just show you how easy this is. Now instantly the whole area is getting hot and just like that she's attached. Let me do the other side. Same way. Instant heat. Let it cool. And just like hot melt glue, your part's going to be attached. This works. It's a great system. So I suggest for fine model building, for building handrails, for building cantonary, for overhead wires, for projects, this is a very useful tool to use. So look into resistance soldering. Another great use for resistance soldering, other than just soldering brass models together, I like to use it on the garden railroad track. 
And the reason for that is it would take a soldering iron, a regular pencil point soldering iron, much too long to heat up this rail. And by the time it did heat it up, the rail overall would be so hot that you wouldn't have any more plastic spikes left on the track. It would absolutely incinerate them. So the key to doing outdoor garden railroad track for making my wires that jump from one section to another so I have complete continuity all the way around is to use a resistant soldering rig. And let me show you how I go about doing that. First of all, I've got to make sure the location where the wire is going to be soldered is clean. And I'm using solid wire uh, this time, and that's going, to, that's going to be an important factor in just a moment. But you put your rosin, in this case I'm using flux paste on your wire and then I would solder it. But because I'm using solid strand wire, I'm gonna go ahead and use some acid soldering flux on this. And the reason for that is because the acid flux works very quickly. It flows much more smooth than the paste. And because it's solid strand wire, I don't have to worry about the acid flux soaking up into the wire, wicking up as they call it, and then the joint literally the acid would eat that joint away in about five years and you'd lose your electrical conductivity. So because it's solid stranded wire and because it can get washed off in the rain, I won't have that problem out here. So simply what I do is I've got my, I've got my acid core solder. I've got to step on this foot switch at the same time to activate the probe that I do the solder joint. I need to connect my ground wire to the track. And I also need to use this pair of tweezers to hold the wire in place during the soldering so it doesn't move. I don't have enough hands to do everything because doing the solder itself is going to require both hands. So everything's set up and ready to go. All I've got to do is step on the foot switch. The gun's going to get hot immediately upon contact. And then I'm going to make contact and you're going to see this solder very quickly. Heat up very fast. I'm not getting any heat. I don't have a good ground, hold on. Only on video, right? Okay, my ground wire's connected. Now I got power. Now I'm instantaneously getting hot, and the solder is flowing, and that's it. I'm done, clean up the excess. And I've got a good solid joint now. I just the wires on there solid and I've got my conductivity and my track can still float. Aesthetically it doesn't look great but functionality wise this is the way to go on garden railroads. Now in this segment of the soldering video we're going to talk about something where the resistance soldering rig can actually pay for itself in just virtually one project and I, I mean that now. Now I've got it set up underneath my workbench. This is a spot where it's normally always set up. And on top of my workbench, I've got a brass locomotive. This is a precision scale uh, K27 in one half inch scale. And originally, when this engine was brand new, this engine sold for $4,999. So you're looking at a $5,000 locomotive. And the front end of this had absolutely been destroyed in shipping when this model was shipped to me. And rather than cry over spilt milk, in the next 20 minutes here, we're going to fix it. Now the problems are rather complicated on this. And I'm not going to take this locomotive all apart. I don't have to. Primarily, it's the cow catcher. It was seriously bent. It's supposed to be the shape of this. And I've re-bent the metal very closely. Now also, the running boards are both loose. And it's this is where the resistance soldering rig absolutely... There's no other tool that could do what we're about to do because the whole point is to heat up the area around this brass without the rest of the cow catcher falling apart. And if you look, these are some very heavy pieces of brass for running boards that I'm going to have to put in there. So normally what I would do is I would sandblast this whole locomotive, but today I'm going to take some lacquer thinner and a wire brush, and I'm going to clean up the parts the best that I can. And then we're going to put some liquid solder on there and some acid core flux from PBL. I really like this acid core flux. Now this stuff will have to be washed off so the solder joint doesn't continue to eat itself away because it's acid core. But at, after this is all finished and it's all cleaned up 
and all the solder joints are, are in place, it should be virtually as good as new. It's just a matter of bending the metal and getting everything to fit the way it's supposed to. And that's not going to be a problem. It's just going to simply take time because you've simply got to bend the metal and work it until it's in the right position. If you need a break, quit. Take a break, come back and do it again while you're fresh. Also on top of the cab, this dome that protects the uh, air hatch on top of the cab was severely bent and I've already uh, kind of re-bent it into the shape that it needs to be but the attach point is going to be on the rear of the cab right here where it is completely loose and we're going to reattach that with just a little bit of solder too. So let me get these parts cleaned off with some lacquer thinner and a wire brush and I'll show you how we use a resistant soldering rig to solder. One additional point, I may be taking Q-tips that are wet and wet towels just to keep the main area cool because we're going to heat this up really fast and I certainly don't want the rest of those parts to start popping off. Okay, just a little further explanation for preparation on this now. I've got some torn up old pieces of dirty sock. I've got a cup of water right here so I can wet the sock. And what it, the reason for that is I've got clamps here and I can clamp the sock or the Q-tip around various sections of metal so that the whole area doesn't get too hot. I might not have to do that, but I'm prepared just in case. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put acid core flux on the parts where the solder is gonna go. And I'm going to assemble all these parts in place, into position, where they are supposed to be affixed to the rest of the brass. And I'm also gonna put liquid solder on it in all the locations where it's gonna make contact. And then I'm gonna heat it up with the gun with the uh, resistant soldering rid tip. I'm going to heat up those locations and start to solder this. That's the plan. So let's see how this goes. Okay, that's where the parts are going to go. So now I'm going to put on the acid core flux where the parts are making contact. So everything will be super clean and I'll have a very good clean area for the solder to flow. So liberally put on this acid core flux. I'm not worried about getting it on my fingers right now. I'm just worried about getting this job done. Okay. And that's where those parts are going to go, right? exactly where I want them to be. Now I'm going to start by soldering the footboards on at the bottom and work the uh, work the joint all the way across these two pieces so they solder together. And I'm going to clamp this with tweezers so everything's in the right position. Just like that. Same on the bottom. And I still got to put in, brush in some solder. I want to do that before I get these two clamped. I'm going to use this paste solder, this plumber solder from the hardware store. It flows really nice. And I'm going to put it on this piece of metal so I have an area to work from, like a pallet. So right now we're going to pretend like this is oil paint and we're going to put this on like oil paint in the locations where the pieces touch. So I'm going to remove my clamp now. I'm going to pull out one of these pieces here, move it a little bit so I've got good there. That's what I want right there. And I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to get this so you can see what's going on here. I'm putting the solder. I'm working the solder into this joint right here. Underneath 
underneath the footboards. We can always clean up the solder if you get too much on after it's attached. There's ways to do that with wire wick, which absorbs the solder and takes it off of the model. That's wick, wire wick, soldering wick is what they call that. I've still got to put this triangle on the bottom here. That is going to be one of the last pieces to go on. This is going to be very complicated to not get this whole structure too hot. I need this to stick together. Putting the solder behind the footboards. And I'm applying it rather liberally. It will stick to the clean metal and the areas where the acid core solder is. The areas where the paint is still on here, the solder will not stick in those areas so I don't have to worry about it flowing there and the heat might bake that paint right off but after we wire brush this and clean this and lacquer thinner after it's soldered we'll be able to put a fresh coat of black paint on this and it should be perfect if I have to do a little wet sanding with a thousand grit paper to make it match up I can do that but this should look like it's never been altered all that much it should be almost as good as new because this is how the brass builder built them All right, got everything clamped together where I want it. I'm going to start with this first foot uh, pad, and I'm going to solder on this area here. I've got both clamps holding it. I've got the resistance soldering rig set on its highest setting, number five. I'm going to take this ground clamp, and I'm going to clamp it to the workpiece somewhere on here so I get good ground. I don't know where I'm going to clip that on here. Hold on. I want to get great great electrical flow through this so I'm going to clamp it right here that should give me good conductivity we'll find out here in a second I got the foot switch on the floor everything's clamped together all I got to do is step on this and do it oh lord here we go I'm not going to hold that with my fingers either I got good contact okay good here we go I got good flow now under the workpiece. There we go. We got a good solder joint. I'm backing off now because I don't want it to get too hot. Now I'm going to keep going all the way across, work my way down here while well, this thing's good. I'm going to drop it right here. I'm going to heat up this area right here. See the solder flowing right between the two pieces. That's how it's supposed to work. Just like that. Back off so I don't get it too hot. I'm going to work my way down right here. I want good solder flow here. And I've got it between the two pieces. This is getting really warm now. I'm going to back off right now. I've got an inch of area that's just soldered together. I'm working my way down a little further now. I hope you can see this. I can't see the camera. I'm trying to see this through the goggles at the same time. Okay, here we go. I'm getting a good area hot. Both pieces of metal. Good joint. I'm backing off the heat now. That's a good solder joint right there. Now I'm working my way down to the bottom footstep, which is where my clamp is, so I gotta move that. That puppy might be hot, it is very hot. So that's what the water is for. We're gonna cool that down right now. This is serious. This is almost like welding, but not quite, because solder is such a cool melting point uh, metal. This little wet rag is getting very hot right now. I might have to uh, let this cool off for a minute before I proceed any further because I, I really don't want this thing is very hot I don't want the I want the front end to cool before I continue on so let me just pause here for a minute okay I'm picking up right where I left off and I'm working on the bottom here now so I want to get down in here and try to see what I'm doing all the rosin set up everything's ready to go I should just be able to step on this and go I don't have contact hold on and here we go. I still don't have electrical contact. Okay. I got nothing. The 
that's the problem here. Okay, I got it. I got heat now. Alright, to continue now. I think this is getting hot because it's parts loose right here. I need to tighten that up or else I'm going to lose my electricity inside of the resistance of this loose nut. Alright, that's tight. Put my clamp on, seeing if I got contact. I do. Alright, let's do this. Let's get this hot. Getting this area hot here, and now I'm working on both pieces. And I've got a good solder flow right now underneath the lap. Both pieces are soldering together. Sweet. I'm going to work my way up to this joint right here. And I'm going to back off. And here we go, right now. That's a good solder joint right there. It's flowing beautifully in between the two pieces of metal. The flux is just drawing the solder right in. I'm working my way up. Now this puppy's going to get hot, so I'm going to back off here at this last part. And I got a good solder joint right there. See that? Isn't that nice? All the way up the workpiece, all the way up, make it smooth. Good joint right there. I'm going to get me some solder and actually feed some solder into this while I'm doing this. So I want this to hold. I want this to hold right there too. Look at that. That's a beautiful joint right there. Flowing very nice. Onto the work pieces. This is just working out nice. There's another nice joint. The solder is flowing between all the work pieces right now. Everything's working out real sweet. This is nice. There you go. Look at that flow right in there. That'll be as strong as brand new. Let me see. I might take a file to this after we're done with this. I'm working on the top now. I'm flowing some solder in between those parts. You couldn't do this with any other tool. Look at how that works. Now this model is going to be just, this is how they build them in China. This is how they build them in the factory. Okay. So let me brush off these parts and look at them. And then we've got to apply this triangle to the bottom. Which will be really easy to do. As you can see so far, it's working out really nice. Got a little bit too much solder down here. I've got this part cleaned off the bottom of the pilot which is going to fit right into those grooves real nice. But I've got to clean out some of this excess solder right here. And that will allow that part to fit in there real nice. And we'll clamp it in place, put solder on it, and I'm going to start at the rear and then work myself around to the front point and I can bend the metal and work my way around as I go. So I'm going to start right here and I want her to be in place just like that. I'm going to let you watch me do this real time so that you see from start to finish how this is going to work out. I'm going to start with my paintbrush and I'm going to start applying the acid core flux where my solder joints are going to be. I want all this brass clean and I want good flow here, and I'll get that with this. This is the best flux in the world. PBL soldering flux. I love that stuff. I use it for all of my big static models when I build brass, scratch build stuff. All right, I'm going to put this part in place. I'm also going to put the flux underneath that. Only in the corners where I'm going to work it right now. I'll worry about the rest of it later as we work around the front. I'm also going to squeeze on some solder. Although, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of solder in there. When I you hit the foot switch, what's in there may already flow. But I'm just going to ensure my flow and just squeeze a little bit of excess solder in here. Not too much, not too little. Just kind of fill that area. See that? Just a little solder right in there. Now I'm going to put the piece in place. I'm going to clamp it the best I can with the tweezers. Just like that is exactly what I want. 
Very happy with that. Very happy with that. Okay, I'm going to ground the uh, resistance soldering rig with my clip. And I'm also going to be ready with a little solder on the side here. A little wire solder. And I'm going to start right here at the top. There's a piece of plastic here to protect the train. I'm going to pull that off right now. This will protect the train from rubbing on the rails and shorting out. Let me see if I got heat. I do. Okay, let's do this. The solder's flowing in the joint beautifully. Look at that plastic melt. We'll put some clear tape there. There you go. Another good flow. Everything flowed nicely right there. I want to pull this in with my pliers just so this gets soldered in the right spot. Heating it up by pulling it in with the pliers at the same time, pinching it into position. Heating it up. And I'm pulling it down. I got a good joint right there. Good, good solder joint right there. Good flow right there. Okay, I'm going to let it set before I let it go with the pliers because I've got that metal right where I want it to be. Just like that. Now we're going to do the one on the bottom the same way. Same way on the bottom joint. I'm going to come in behind with my solder on this one. Ready? Here we go. Foot switch. Touching my solder just a little bit there. Come on, baby, get hot. There you go. There you go. I got good flow between the parts. And it's permanent. Now I'm going to work my way around to the front. I'm going to have to move the camera here just so I can see what's going on for a minute. I'm going to move around here to the front. This is really nice the way this is lining up. I want to make sure this metal lines up real perfect. So I'm going to take my pliers and just squeeze everything just in the position here where it should go. Let me bring you in on this so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get this lip to line up right with that and I need a bigger pair of pliers. I need a little brute force here. I just want to gently squeeze that just into place like that. There's no reason to make a mistake here. We're in control of everything. So we want to get this just right. And that is just right. That looks good. See, I'm squeezing it into position. Just metals, bends real soft. That's why brass is such a joy to work with. If I can get a solder joint just like that right there, I'll be a very happy camper. I'm going to put on my flux. You're here with me real time as I'm doing this. Flux is in position. I'm going to heat this up and touch my solder to it at the same time that I'm heating it up and clamping it with these pliers with my fingers all at the same time I can do where's my clamp set that's a good joint right there, that's what I want now I'm going to get on the switch here and just fill this bottom area with solder. Ready? Here we go. Just a little bit right there. It's perfect. Right here. Just a little bit there. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's flowing nicely. All in a joint. Look at that. It's perfect. That's exactly what we want right there. And just work your way all the way around to the bottom here. I've only got this to go. I'm going to flip this engine over and look at it and bend it just right. Okay, this is the last part now to do. I just need to run a bead of solder up this joint right here. And this cow catcher is finished. She's all done. 
So I'm ready to go. I've got everything exactly bent where I want it. I've just taken a little time with the pliers here and worked it. And I'm not even going to put any liquid solder on it this time. I'm just simply going to use my bead of solder and work it work right along the piece without blocking your camera view if I can do that at all possible. So here we go. We're going to start right here. Foot switch, and I got solder. A little bit too much right there. That's okay. A little wire wick, I can take that off. A little more, foot switch, solder. Work my way down. Foot switch, solder. Okay, now that's it. I would say that if I clean this part now, I give it another bath and lacquer thinner, real clean. And then all I've got to do is uh, paint it. That's pretty much it. You've got our part on there good and solid. All the pieces are back together again, very heavy pieces of brass. And that's not going anywhere. That's not going to break. This is a. This is pretty much fixed right here. And that's how I take a resistance soldering rig and absolutely repair the front end of a brass locomotive. I'll take the file to this, clean it up real nice, and then paint it. And I think we're going to be perfect. I'm also soldering the uh, protective hood for the uh, cab roof vent. Same way. I've got the solder in the joint. I've got everything fluxed with uh, acid core rosin. And I got good solder flow just like that. I got a good joint right there too. Perfect. So this is tacked on permanent. So a little bit of thousand grit sandpaper, smooth it out a little bit, clean it up, and I'll airbrush the roof, and I'll airbrush the pilot, both at the same time now. Now, I finish before painting and clean up everything with a Dremel wire rotary brush. And I go over everything and just any loose solder, any loose resin, Anything that doesn't belong there comes right off the wire brush, real sweet. And now I'm ready for one more wash with a lacquer thinner and a cloth, and then it's time to uh, thin some scale coat paint and paint this. Okay, I've got an airbrush mixed with some Scale Coat Black paint. It's Scale Coat 1 lacquer based paint. I really like that on brass. It's, I've been using that on brass for 20 plus years and it works great. So I've got the model sitting here in the spray booth. I've got my airbrush ready to go with 20 pounds of air pressure. And all I'm going to simply do now is just put an even coat of spray on this. The paint is thinned about 40, almost 50% thinner and then 50% paint. So I can have a smooth coverage. The key here is to be smooth. You want it to look as factory as possible. And this will. Look at how beautiful that's looking. I want to turn it around and I want to do the underside as well. This thing weighs about 40 pounds. There you go. 
I'm going to spray right down here the same way. I'm avoiding the wheels. This airbrush gives me very focused spray so it goes only where I want it to go. And that looks very nice. And that pretty much fixes that. I'll tell you what, it looks just as good as new. Now I'm not going to bake this whole engine. I'm going to let this thing set for a good 24 hours and let this paint cure. But that is pretty much the way you'd want it to be if you're going to fix it. It looks factory, it looks brand new, it looks very good and we've done that with the resistance soldering rig. You couldn't do that without any other. This is the best tool to do that with. And if you get talented at it and start repairing brass or scratch building brass, you can literally make some money with a tool like that. And this is how our finished soldering job looks. This thing looks factory new. A couple dents, prototypically accurate in fact, if you really want to talk about the cow catcher, but I think the thing looks absolutely fantastic. That's the magic of being able to use resistant soldering rigs. You could take a locomotive like this that was literally on its deathbed and bring it back to life. The cab, that section came out pretty good. So we've got pretty much a finished locomotive now. It looks decent. Now remember, you're going to use rosin core solder for doing your electrical work. You're going to use acid core flux rosin core flux, acid core flux to do your building, scratch building brass pieces. I like to use the soldering wick wire for removing excess solder because when you hit the heat to this wick it in fact absorbs the solder, it just sucks right into it because the wick is impregnated with a lot of uh, resin, a uh, rosin so that it soaks in. I really like using this rosin core solder a roll like this will last you virtually your entire life I probably have had that one for 25 years. And I like to weather my soldering joints using Microengineering's weathering solution when I'm doing track. It helps darken that really shininess. So once you master this, you can build a lot of really cool things with either pencil tips or resistant soldering rigs. Like this 110 foot light tower that I built that needs to have a little repair work done to it, I can see. But this is something that I built when I first got the resistant soldering rig and it was in a rail model journal article a long time ago. Okay, so let me show you how to repair this light tower because it's it's pretty beat up and it really needs work. First we've got to clean off the area where we're going to have to do all the soldering. And normally what you would do is you would take a wire brush and some lacquer thinner and simply brush off the part and clean it. But I want to show you another tool that's really helpful to add to your arsenal of tools when you're working with brass. And that is a sandblaster. I picked up this uh, North Coast prototype model sandblaster about 20 years ago. And I've got a vacuum attached to it where I can suck the air uh, out of the sandblasting unit while the sandblasting is going on. So let me show you how we're going to use this tool right now to fix this piece of brass. I've got 60 pounds of air being delivered to my sandblasting unit and I know you're not going to be able to see inside of this because it really fills up with dust when I do this. I also have the vacuum and I'm going to turn that on right now and sandblast this unit. And just like that, we should have something that's clean enough here now. I'm going to wash this off in water, but this is the, the brass. You can see the exposed brass now. Let me get this to focus. You can see how it's cleaner. Now we're going to sit over at the workbench and attach these pieces that are broken off. And we can use a resistant soldering rig for this project, or we can use the pencil tip. I'll show you how to do both. So let's talk about how we're going to fix the light tower. Now notice I've got this in a pan of ice 
and the reason for that is because sometimes I clip the alligator clip to the vise itself and then I'm able to get electrical conductivity through the whole model but in this case I've got the alligator clip set up right here on the end of the structure and I've got the top all set up where we can start working fabricating and rebuilding this now there's no magic to this we're just going to do this one section at a time because this thing is really messed up on top it must have gotten stepped on or crushed under something I'm putting just a little bit of liquid solder on and I want to just get this first L piece to be in a position I also want to put on some acid core PBL flux on here because that'll really help it flow I've got the resistance soldering rig set for a lower setting I'm set for three on this because it's very small material I've got my clamp in place and I can actually hold this with my fingers as I do this just like that heat just like that and that's the first part attached now I'm going to work on these corners look at how messed up that is this is really a simple fabrication actually it was really easy to build this at the time I recall that it just took time I'm putting just a little solder on the parts here I'm going to work on this corner right here next once this is in place, this will be structurally more sound. So there's just a few joints here to fix. Now look, I'm going to put the solder. I'm going to make sure it's right where I want it. There's where I want it. Now I'm going to hit the switch. Just like that. And so that's fixed. Work our way all the way around, piece by piece. Making sure all the parts are bent just right. And we'll have this thing fixed in no time. Nice thing about brass, I just it's soft, it's easy to work with. Okay, what am I doing? I'm putting this joint on right here. A little bit of solder. And a little solder in this joint here too. Just like that. I just want a little bit on there. I don't need very much. Just like that. Okay, that's attached. This is how you fabricate brass. And I'll tell you what, it's permanent. And there isn't anything you can't build in brass. It's, it's a wonderful medium to work with. I'm on it. I'm holding this with my fingers now because I'm they're far, enough, far enough away where it's not going to get burnt. And that's attached. So this structure is slowly getting rebuilt. Much stronger now. I'll just keep working my way around and we'll have this thing fixed in just a few minutes doing just what I'm doing. Looks like a little bending going on here. We'll have this thing back together. If you look at the next joint I want to solder here, it's actually got enough solder on it where I don't have to put any solder on this joint right here. All I simply need to do is put a little flux on it and drop some heat on that. And I'm positive that there's enough solder in there already where it'll flow very nicely. And I just lost my continuity because the alligator clip fell off. Let me put that back on the model. I'm going to put the alligator clip right up here. And now I'm going to step on the switch here and just do this attachment. Right there. One, two, three. And that's it. She's attached. And that's, that's permanent. That's not going anywhere. And just like that, the light tower has been sort of refabricated and it's fixed, it's repaired. And you couldn't have done that with another another tool. I didn't use a pencil tip on it because really in reality the resistance, resistance soldering rig is the best tool for doing this. It really heats up that small area quickly whereas a pencil tip would have probably gotten some of the other parts heated up and then we'd 
be coming apart again. Now one suggestion I've got for you is to build a platform and what this is is this is a platform with a piece of brass on top okay and it's got a piece of brass that's soldered to the top coming off the side here so I can just put my grounding clip on this when I'm doing my resistance soldering and this piece becomes grounded so that I only need to use my pencil tip when I'm soldering a uh, very fine detail. For example, look at these photographs of this tugboat. Remember the green tugboat we talked about that I built all the stanchion handrails and the top with brass? Well, using the resistant soldering rig and using this brass table that I've just described to you to build out of a block of wood and putting brass on top, you can see where I only need the pencil tip in small areas. The alligator clips off to the side, my flat surface is grounded, so I'm able to solder on the lights, the antennas, the handrails, the roof's angle, all of that was carved out of a sheet of brass and you know soldered all the parts onto it. Look at the handrails that I'm building here in this photograph. These handrails are sitting on top of the flat grounded surface so that I can solder them together, solder the steps on, solder the individual pieces on using a low setting on the resistant soldering rig and the, uh, the flux, the um, acid core flux for this. You can see I've got my solder wick down there in the corner. Here's another shot of the setup with the boat's uh, cabin put in place in the center of the steps in the superstructure that I just soldered together. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do and there's a lot of nice kits on the market. Here's a bridge from John Pilecki structures. Now he doesn't make HO scale structures anymore but he's making O scale narrow gauge structures now. But this is one he made an HO scale bridge. And there's a lot of products on the market. And look at the beautiful detail of these bridge parts. So once you get good at soldering, it's just a matter of repetitiveness. And I imagine this would actually go quicker than you think once you start getting into building all these uh, bridge girders in order to put together this 200 foot long HO scale bridge. So that's the kind of neat stuff that awaits you just check it out, experiment, think about what you'd like to build, get some really nice solder equipment, and just pretty much, you know, mess around with it at first. I'm sure there's a lot of other information that you can find in old articles and magazines on how to apply soldering uh, stuff to the hobby, but this will give you a good general round, you know, a lot of information here that's going to help you go a long way with regards to building things out of brass and being able to solder your wire, do your track work, and repair models that need to be fixed. So I hope this helped you, this soldering video. Um, happy soldering! All of the model railroad products seen in this episode of What's Neat are available through Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado or order online at mycaboose.com.